Hello Year 11s. So today we're starting a new idea. And to start off this new idea, we're going to begin to talk about anti-differentiation. And as you can see, this word anti-differentiation can be broken into two parts. We have anti and we have differentiation. So you can probably guess what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing the opposite of differentiation. So let's remind ourselves what it means to differentiate. The process involves multiply by the power and then reduce the power by one. And I've written that right here, differentiate. As you can see, if I have a power of n, I'm going to multiply that n to the front and then subtract by one. And we know that the idea, what we're doing here, is finding the gradient of a tangent at the point. So you kind of got the process and then you have the idea, what we're conceptually doing. And that's what we've done previously. So differentiate, we're finding the gradient of a tangent at a point. What we're going to be talking about today is anti-differentiation. And as you can see here, the process is just directly the opposite to differentiation. So we're going to increase the power by one and then divide by the new power. So as you can see here, we're first going to add one to the power and then divide by that new power. And you can see that that's directly opposite to what we were doing here, in which our first step was multiplying by the power, then reducing the power by one. So if you analyze these statements, you can see that they're directly opposite to each other. So anti-differentiation, this lesson is going to be about this process. We're not going to talk about the idea behind what we're doing at the moment. This lesson is just uh, coming familiar and familiarize ourselves with the process of anti-differentiation. Okay, so with that being said, let's just explore this a little further and look at this diagram right here. Because differentiation and anti-differentiation are the opposite, if I was to start with f of x, so just a function, and I was to differentiate it, I would end up with a derivative. We all know that. Well, if I was now to anti-differentiate the derivative, I would end up back at the original function. And that's because the process are just opposite to each other. By doing the opposite thing, we go back to where we started. Perfect. Let's keep on going now and answer the questions in your booklet. So the first thing it's asking us to do is find an antiderivative of x to the power of four. Well, we have to become familiar with some notation here. So as you can see here, we've got the notation of antiderivatives. And let me rub this out and draw it again. The first thing that you're going to do is you're gonna put one of these fancy little symbols here. Then you're going to put in this. So let me put that in. We're gonna put in x to the power of four and then you finish it off with dx. So what I've written in here in red, this is our notation for anti-differentiation. And I've just written down how you would read this statement here. You would say the general antiderivative of x to the power of four with respect to x is, now another word for antiderivatives would be uh, indefinite integrals. So you could say the indefinite integral of x to the power of four with respect to x. So the indefinite integral of x to the power of four with respect to x. So that's what we're doing. This is how you would say it. You have to realize that there's two ways you could say it. You can call it a general antiderivative, or you can call it an indefinite integral. And in our next lesson, we're going to talk more about integrals and just how this is just another word we use for anti-differentiation and kind of getting into the nuance of that. Nuance, that's a fancy word. Okay, so with that being said, and you're now familiar with the notation, how would we write our answer to this? So remember what we're going to do is we're going to add one to the power first. So if I have four, it's going to become five. And then I'm going to divide by that new power. So that right there is going to be my answer. Let's come to the next one here. And let me actually just write out what my notation is going to be again. So remember the way that you're going to write out your notation is one of these fancy little things here. It looks like a stretched out S and then you're gonna have a DX. And then right in the middle is what you're going to be anti-differentiating. So in this case, it's going to be x to the power of seven. And now we're going to write what our answer is going to be. So I'm going to go, all right, I'm going to add one to my power to make it eight and then divide by that new power, which is eight. Just like that, let's now move on to the next one. So again, what we're going to do is we're gonna go this two x cubed plus Ooh, let me do this in blue to keep it consistent, shall we? So it's going to be two uh, x cubed plus x plus five, then dx at the end. And our answer to this, I might put the answer down here so I don't run out of room. 
what I can do is I can treat each of these separately. So I'm going to take my first one, I'm going to raise the power, then divide by that new power. I go to the next one. So in this case, hopefully you realize that there is an invisible one there. So if I was to increase my power by one, it's now going to become two, and then I'm going to divide by that new power. And then here, this is actually a really interesting one. I have a constant, but as we talked about when we were going through differentiation, what's actually there, but is invisible at the moment is X to the power of zero, because X to the power of zero is one and five times one is just five. So if I was to add uh, one to this power right here, what I would end up with is five X to the power of one. But obviously I don't have to write that one. It just is like that. So that is what my new function is going to be. And then you'd have to tidy it up a little bit. You'd have to say, all right, I can do some simplification here. It's going to end up being X to the power of four over two plus X squared over two uh, plus five X. Let's now move on to our next one in which it's very similar again. You might like to pause the video and see if you can do this for yourself. That, and then we're gonna write it in, three X to the power of five plus two X plus seven. So that is going to end up being three X to the power of six because five plus one is six. I divide that by my new power plus two X to the two. I divide that by my new power and then it's going to be seven X. Now you'd have to clean this up a little bit. So this is going to be X to the power of six over two plus X squared plus seven X. All right, so we have finished going through that. We've simplified it all nicely. And that's how we do anti-differentiation. Now, here's the shocking part, and I want this to be a really shocking part for you. Ready, I'm gonna write it down, ready? Shock. Everything that we have just done, they're nearly right, but they're all incorrect at the moment. We have to add something to all of them to make them correct. And I wanna make this a shocking moment for you. Uh, hopefully you remember this for the rest of your method careers, but it needs to be a shocking moment. It's like, oh, wow, we just did all this work, but at the moment they're all wrong. All of them are incorrect. All of them are incorrect. Why are they incorrect? Okay, well, hopefully that's shock. Hopefully you're you know, well and truly shocked. To answer this question and to fix these problems now, let's scroll down here and read this statement. It says, if asked for an antiderivative of E, e.g. 3dx, there are multiple answers. So there are multiple answers. Okay, what, what exactly does this statement mean? To kind of delve into this statement, let's remind ourselves of this, which tells us that if we start with a function and we differentiate it, we obviously end up with the derivative. And then if we anti-differentiate the derivative, we end up at our function again. So if this is true, let's see how it works in practice. So if f of x is equal to x cubed plus four, and I was now, oh, let me make this a bit thinner. And I was to now differentiate it. So differentiate, this is what we're used to be doing. So three x squared. Now when I differentiate, what happens to my constant? It goes away. So that means now, if I was to anti-differentiate this thing right here, if I was to anti-differentiate this, I should end up, so let me just write anti diff. If I was to anti-differentiate my derivative, I should end up back at my function. Well, is this true? Let's give it a crack. So I'm going to go this, I'm gonna do three X squared DX. And what's that going to be equal to? Well, I'm gonna add one to my power. So I'm going to get three X to the power of three. Then I'm going to divide by that new power and then I can clean this up a little bit. Obviously these will go away with each other. So that means I'm going to be left with X cubed. Now, here's the shocking part. Is X cubed the same as X cubed plus four? No, it is not, clearly not. Let me show you again what happens if we were to do this process. So here's another function, x cubed plus 27. So notice here I had four, but here I have 27. Well, let's again differentiate this. If I was to do that, I would get three x squared and then my constant would go away. If I was to now anti-differentiate the derivative, I should end up back at my um, function. Uh, so that's going to be three X squared. And as you can see, I'm anti-differentiating the same thing here. So it's going to be X cubed again. And hopefully you can notice that X cubed is not the same thing as X cubed plus 27. 
So what are we going to do here? And now comes the big moment, the big reveal, the thing that you're going to remember for the rest of your lives. Whenever you have to perform anti-differentiation or, in other words, indefinite integrals, indefinite integration, that's another word for it. So anti-differentiation, another word for it is indefinite. Oh, I can't spell. That should be indefinite integration. So this is important because if we were doing a definitive one, we wouldn't have to. But if it's indefinite integration or anti-differentiation, you must, you must, you must, you must plus C. You must plus C to your answer. And hopefully you can understand why. C is an arbitrary constant which represents 4 or 27 or whatever's at the end there. We have to put that plus C because we don't know what this constant at the end is going to be. Because when we differentiate a function with a constant, it disappears. So when we anti-differentiate it, we have to put in a plus C to know, you know, that there could be something there. Now, there's always going to, even if it's zero, C would equal zero, you have to put the C. So let's come up here now and fix all our mistakes. Do this really boldly so you never forget. We're going to have to plus C to everything here. We're going to have to plus C to everything here. Now that we have plus C, this is all correct. It's all correct. So put ticks there just to make yourself feel better. Ticks always make me feel good. You have to plus C when you anti-differentiate. And if we come back all the way up here to look at our little process here that I stole from the textbook, you can see that they have a plus C. You can see that they have a plus C. You can see they have a plus C. I'm just gonna keep repeating that so you remember to plus C when you're anti-differentiating. Okay, hopefully that is now well embedded in your mind. Okay, let's keep on going now. Let's come here and let's just do some more questions. <clears throat> so these are kind of fun now. Let's see how we go with them. So I need to anti-differentiate this. So I'm going to begin here. I can treat them separately. I'm going to end up with X. Oh, someone is driving very fast near my house. Oh, no, it's the garbage man. If I want to plus uh, one to my power here, I'm going to get three. I'm going to then divide by that new power. Then I'm going to get minus. Oh, the garbage man is very loud today. Then I'm going to plus X here. And then I'm going to plus C. So remember when you have a constant and you're anti-differentiating, you end up just adding an X to it. So that is going to be the answer to the first problem. Man, the garbage man. Okay, let's now come here. Let's look at this one. How would we go with this one? Well, again, it's going to be the same process. We're going to plus one to my power, which is going to make it six and then divide by that new power. Then we're going to come here. We're going to go add one to my power here, which will make it X. Don't forget to plus C, never forget to plus C. Then remember to do some canceling here. So both of these are divisible by uh, three. So this will be two. That means I'm going to end up with X to the power of six over two plus four X plus C. So let's just highlight our answers here so you know what the answer is. That's my answer to the first one. And this is going to be the answer to my next one. So X to the power of six plus four X plus C. Perfect. Can you try these ones for yourselves? There's a little trick here, but hopefully you can spot what that is. So the trick is you first have to expand this out. Later on, we'll learn some tricks to do this, but for now, just expand it out. So if we were to expand this out, I'm going to get X squared plus eight X plus 16. And I'm anti-differentiating that. So let me put in my, uh, my symbols there, my notation that tells me I'm doing that. And now I just have to treat each of these separately. So I'm going to get X to the three over three plus eight X squared over two plus 16 X plus C. I would then clean this up. It's gonna be X cubed. Uh, this right here will become, because I can divide both of these by two, this will become four. So I'm going to get four X squared plus 16 X plus C. I grab my highlighter and I give that a highlight. Beautiful. We're doing a great job, everyone. The garbage man is gone, which is good. Let's now move on over here and let's go again. So again, you should be able to do this for yourself. We're first going to expand this out. So I'm going to actually keep these derivative sign, anti-differentiation, do I have eyes anything? Anti-differentiation anti -differentiation sign there. So it's going to be X squared. Then it's going to be plus two X minus five X. And then it's going to be minus 10. Then that's dx on the end there. I can then clean that up a little bit. This is gonna be x squared 
minus 3x minus 10, I'm anti-differentiating that. Have I been saying differentiate when I've meant to be saying anti-differentiate for some of them? I apologize if I have. Uh, now we're going to do this, it's going to be x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared over 2 minus 10x plus c. And that's as simple as it can go. So let's highlight that. That is my answer for that one. Perfect. We just have a few more questions to go, two more to go, and then we're done. So hopefully you've got all that down. We've come a long way. Let's do some more anti-differentiation. So here is some more anti-differentiation right here. Now, this computer is going to be a bit of a pain for me. Let's come down here and let's zoom in here. Okay, so what does this say? It says, find the equation for y if dy dx is equal to 2x minus 1 and y is equal to 3 when x is equal to 2. All right, so how exactly are we going to do this? The first thing you need to realize that if we have y and we have dy dx, well, to go from this to this, we are differentiating, we are differentiating. If we want to find the equation for y and we have dy df, dy dx, we are going to anti-differentiate our derivative in order to get it back. So we're going to perform anti-differentiation to get it back to y. We've been given the derivative, we're going to anti-differentiate to get back to y. So that means we're going to do this, 2x minus 1 d x. What is that going to be equal to? It's going to be 2x squared over 2 minus x plus c. That's what it's going to be equal to. I can then tidy that up a little bit. This is going to be x squared minus x plus c. Now, we've been given another piece of information, and that is when y equals 3, uh, y equals 3 when x equals negative 2. So that means we can sub in that point. So let's sub in, sub in negative 2, 3 to find c. We can find what c is going to be, because this is y right here. So it's going to be 3 is equal to, I'm going to get negative 2, I'm going to square it, minus, minus 2 plus c. What's that going to be? It's going to be 3 equals 4 plus 2 plus c. Once I've got that, I'm going to end up with 3 plus, ooh, 3 equals 6 plus c, which is going to mean that negative 3 is equal to c. So my final answer, I can come up here now and say, well, this is what I anti-differentiated to begin with, this one right here, and I'm going to come here, I'm going to get rid of c, and in place of c, I now know what it is, I can get rid of that plus as well, it's going to be negative 3. So by give, by give, by b, I'm getting tongue-tied, because we've been given a point, we can find what c is going to be. Can you now give the next one a try for yourself? and then I'll give you the answer. So let's come over here. Okay. Hopefully you've given this a go. What we're going to do is we're going to anti-differentiate 4x plus 2 dx, which is going to be equal to what? I'm gonna give you that first step. I want you to see if you can do it for yourself. Okay. Hopefully you did it. What it's going to be is 4x squared over 2 plus 2x plus c. We can then simplify that. That's going to be 2x squared plus 2x plus c. And that's what y is going to be equal to. Once we've figured out that, we've been given a point. We've been given the point 2, negative 1. So I'm going to say sub in negative 1, 2 to find c. If I do that, I'm going to end up with 2 is equal to 2, negative 1 squared, plus 2, negative 1, plus c, which is going to be 2 equals 2, minus 2, plus c, which means 2 is going to be equal to c, which means my answer is going to be, I would come up here and I would steal this, control c, come down here, control V. I know that C is going to be two. 
Whew. All right, and now I can highlight that. That is going to be my answer. Perfect. Let's now zoom out and appreciate everything we've done here. Beautiful working here. Everything is completed. Hopefully you feel comfortable with the process of anti-differentiation. Uh, this lesson is all about the process. In our next lesson, we're going to talk about, as you can see here, what is the idea behind this? So that's the next lesson. What's the idea? We know that when we differentiate, we're finding the gradient of the tangent at a point. But what are we doing when we anti-differentiate? Hopefully that's a hook that will uh, keep you tuned in for next lesson. Well, you have to turn up to class anyway, so I don't really need a hook. You have to come. All right, I'll see you next lesson.